Hi everyone, and um, today we're going to go through another very classic um, interview question, which is lead code problem 20, valid parenthesis. Um, the question, the context for this question is that given a string, let's go through the problem description together. Given a string containing just the characters, these six characters, six types of characters, um, open, open a uh, round bracket, close a round bracket, open square bracket, oh no, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, open square bracket, and close square bracket. So given this string, it's only going to contain these six types of characters. It's asking us to determine whether the input string is valid or not. Well, just go through a few examples, you'll see the uh, question requirement is very clear. So first example is given this input is the most simple valid input, which is which contains two characters only, and open and close round parentheses. Of course, it's going to be true. The second example is that it has all of these six valid parentheses types, and in the correct order. So it has the open um, round bracket close round bracket, open square bracket, close square bracket, and curly open bracket, and closed curly bracket, and in the correct order. So it's going to be returning true. Then let's uh, look at a few negative examples, meaning it's going to return false. For example, number three, these two, although it's one is open, the other is closed, but they are of the two different parentheses types. So it's going to return false. Another false example is, is example four, which it has for the round parentheses, it does have one open and one closed. And for the square brackets, it, it does have one open and one closed, but they are not in the correct order, meaning one open should be followed by the same type of the parentheses immediately after. However, in this case, it's not. So it's going to return false. Another counter example of the example four is this, which it has two types of open and closed parentheses, and they are in the correct order. Meaning, say this one has an open curly bracket, followed by another open square bracket, and then immediately followed by a closed square bracket. That's totally fine. And because these, these two could counter, counter each other, and then they are just gone and then followed by another closed curly bracket. So this input is going to be valid. Um, a very straightforward um, or algorithm comes into mind is to use stack. Basically, whenever, say, whenever, especially when we look at example five, whenever we get an, when, whenever we encounter an open um, brackets, whether it's one of these three types, we are just going to push that open bracket on top of the stack. Whenever we encounter an, um, the corresponding closed bracket, we're just going to remove and, and we're just going to check, first check whether the stack is empty or not. If it's empty, then it's going, we're just going to return false immediately. And if it's not empty, we're just to pop the top character on the stack to check whether the one on top of the stack is the corresponding um, open bracket. If it's not, we're just going to return false also. And in the end, we're just going to return whether the stack is empty or not. If it should be empty, then it's going to be a valid use case. That's a very straightforward solution. Um, however, um, another user called, I remember his name is um, 13 Steven. He, he just shared on Discuss board a very brilliant solution. Let's take a look here. It's, which, is going, which is following the same idea, but instead of pushing all of the open brackets onto the stack, he simply ignored this step. Instead, he pushed all of the corresponding closed brackets on top of the stack which is even nicer and more elegant. A little bit slow here. Oh, okay, it showed up. 
No, it's not. Okay, it does show that. Um, we can just code up the solution quickly ourselves. So first, we'll use stack. Stack. The type is going to be character. Character. Stack. New. Stack. And then we'll just iterate through this given input string. To char array. And while we iterate through this array, we'll just uh, check every single character to see if it's one of the three types of the closed brackets. If, oh, if it's one of the open ones. See, close. Uh, first is wrong parenthesis. If it if it is, we we'll just to push its corresponding corresponding closed parenthesis on top of the stack. We'll do the same for the other two types of brackets. We we'll do square bracket. Push the same corresponding close square bracket on top of the stack. And then we'll do the same for the curly bracket. If it is the same curly bracket, we'll just push the corresponding close curly bracket on top of the stack. And then if it is not one of these three open brackets, then we'll just check if it's another, if the stack is not empty. If the stack is empty, then we can return false directly. Why? Because we encountered a closed, so say the, the input string is only going to contain these six types of characters only. There is no other in, um, types of characters. So if we don't encounter any one of the three open br um, brackets, that means we must have encountered a closed brackets, right? In that case, if the stack is empty, then we could just do return false immediately because that means it's not a valid parenthesis group, right? Or otherwise, we could check the, the character that's on top of the stack to pop it out and check whether that one equals to the character. If it's not equal, then we can return false also, which is this case, example four. At the end, we'll just return whether stack is empty or not. At this moment, we should have popped out all of that using this one using this one, we should use pop instead of peak. At this moment, after we iterate through, we use this for loop. We will iterate through the entire string, the entire input string, every single character in the string in order. At this moment, the stack should be empty. If it's not empty, that means we have another, ca another character that we didn't go through that, d that doesn't have a corresponding closed brackets. That means it's not valid. For example, we can walk through example four as an example. First, okay, let's walk through this example. Let me copy paste here, this one. Example four. A bit difficult to see. All right, it's very difficult. For this example, the input is this. And then we go through this input. First character is open so the stack will be look like this stack first we encounter an open wrong parenthesis then we're going to push on top of the stack we're going to put a closed round bracket right and then we uh, we just finished um, this um, the entire four branches we go to the second character uh, we go to the second character which is an open square bracket that means it's this case we're going to push on top of the stack we're going to push a closed square bracket 
and then we go through the third one. The third one is a closed round parenthesis. That means it's not this case, it's not this case, it's not this case, it's not this case. So that means it's going to come here, right? We are going through the third bracket, uh, the third close, the third character in the given string, which is a closed um, round parenthesis. It's not the first three cases, so it's coming here. Stack is empty? No, it's not. Then we're going to check this one. Stack pop. So we pop the top one on top of the stack, which is a closed square bracket, which is not equal to C. What is what is C? What the current character is a is a closed round parenthesis. That means this one is this one does hold, which means we're going to return false here. All right, that's the negative case. Happy case, we can of course go through, very simple. Then let's talk about the time complexity of this algorithm. Time. We're just going to go through this entire string only once. So it's just going to be O N. N is the number of characters, the number of characters in the given string. And the space complexity, in the worst case, we always consider the worst case for both time and space complexity. The worst case for space is going to be O N as well. Why? Because in the worst case, it's going to be an input string like this. Ooh, it's all going to be the same open closed uh, open brackets, or it's going to be like this. It's all closed brackets. So we're going to push the entire every single n characters in the given string on top of the stack. And until then, we finished iterating through this entire string. We reached the end, then we're going to just return false. But at this moment, we popped, we pushed every single character of this string on top of the stack. So it's going to consume O n space as well. So that's ba that basically concludes the tutorial of this lead code problem valid parenthesis. If you like this video, please do me a favor and hit, gently hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe to our channel. And please leave me any comments, feedback, questions, thoughts, concerns um, um, in the link description below. Leave me a comment. I would really, really appreciate it. If you hit the like button, it's going to help with the YouTube algorithm to, sp to spread the tutorial to more audience to let us study the interview questions. They are very useful algorithm and data structures more and deeply better together. I'll see you guys next time.